Okay, we are now recording. So we're gonna continue from last time we had been talking about frames. So we're gonna start this class off with a frame problem uh, that's a little bit more complex than the other problems we've been looking at. So this problem is problem 103 from your book. And the problem statement says, for the frame and loading shown, determine the components of all forces acting on member A, B, D. So if we look at this frame right here, we're asked to find the components of all the forces acting on this member here, A, B, D. So let's write out our find. We're asked to find the components of the forces acting on member ABD. So we're given this frame. It looks like there is a pin at A and a roller at G. So we have a pin at A and a roller at B. E. Okay, any questions before we get this problem started? Oh, I see people are chatting. Okay, so no questions, but everybody can hear me and see my screen okay? Okay, great. So we're gonna start this problem out by drawing a free body diagram of the entire frame. That's typically a good place to start. So let's start by drawing this frame. We have member, and to help us see it better, I'm gonna draw the three members in different colors. So that's member A, B, D. We have point A, point B, and point D. And over three, up. Four, we're going to have that is so this is point B and here we have point C and we have one more member to draw So that is our free body diagram, or the start of our free body diagram. And then we're gonna add in some dimensions here. We have nine inches, nine inches, nine inches and six inches. Here we have 12 inches and 12 inches. So I have three different members, and I need to draw my external forces now. So I have a pin at A, so I'm going to have a Y force AY and an X force AX. I have a roller at E, so I'm going to have a force that's perpendicular to that surface at E, so that's going to be a horizontal force right there. Okay, so I also need to draw those external forces that I was given. So I have a 360 pounds here and 240 pounds. Okay. 
So that is my free body diagram of the entire frame. From here, I have three unknowns. So I can write my three equilibrium equations for the whole frame. It's not gonna be the total answer for the problem. I'll still have to do more work after that, but that's a good place for us to start. We have three unknowns. which are AX, AY, and EX. We also have our three equations. We sum the forces in the X is equal to zero, sum the forces in the Y is equal to zero, and sum the moments about one of the points is equal to zero. So for anybody who has their microphone on, can you tell me which point we'd like to take a moment about? Or I can decide. Point A. Point A, yes. I think point A would be great. So I'm gonna take a moment about point A. So I'm gonna start my Equation, so some of the forces in the x direction, I'm going to write AX plus EX. Some of the forces in the y direction, I have AY minus 360 minus 240. Now I have to sum the moments about A. So AX and AY go through point A, so I'm not going to consider those. I have 360 times a moment arm, it looks like 15. And that's going to make us rotate clockwise around point A, so that's going to be a minus. I also have that 240. Our moment arm there is going to be that 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 6, so that's going to be 33. And that is going to be a negative moment as well. And then we have plus EX times our moment arm of 12. So now I have three equations, three unknowns. I can solve for those unknowns. So first I can solve for EX using that last equation. I have 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 divided by 12. So I get 1,110 pounds. I solve for AX and I get minus 1,110 pounds. And AY is going to be 600 pounds. So that answer is part of the question. So the question asks us, for the components of all the forces acting on member ABD. So we found the components acting at point A, but we have two more pins on member ABD. So we have more forces to solve for. So now I'm going to draw the free body diagram of member ABD. We're gonna draw free body diagram of ABD. Remember that is this member right here. So we just solved and got AX is minus 1,110. So I can either <coughs> in the positive direction. And then when I'm plugging in, plug in the negative value, or I can just go ahead and draw that in the negative direction. And when I plug it into my equation, I'll just use whichever direction I've drawn. So I'm gonna draw that in the negative 
because that's what I solved for, 1,110 pounds. AY, I got a positive 600. At point B, I have a pin. So I'm going to have a BY and a BX. At point D, I also have a pin. So I'm going to have DY and DX. And let's include our dimensions on our free body diagram. Here we have 18 inches and six inches. So that's our free body diagram of A, B, D. So if we look at this, we have four unknowns. And what that means is we need four equations. But we can only write three equations. So we need four equations, we only have three for this number. So we have a new goal, which is we need to figure out, or we need to use one of the other members to write a fourth equation. And when we write that fourth equation, ideally we won't add any more unknowns. Because if we add more unknowns, then we have to write even more equations. So we're going to use one of the other members to write a fourth equation. And ideally, we don't want to add any more unknowns. So we have two different members here. We have member BC, which is this one right here. So we could draw the free body diagram for that one and write an equation where we don't add any unknowns. Or we could draw member CDE and write an equation from that. Either one will work it's really up to you for which one you want to choose. So I'm going to choose member CDE. If we have questions about it after, I can show you how we would solve it using uh, member BC. So remember for A, B, D, we have our three equations. And then I'm going to draw member CD, CDE. And at E, we found that we have a force 1,110. Oh, a gift from Zoom. Oh, well, that's good to know. I didn't realize I had a time limit, but I'm glad they removed it. So here we have 1,110 pounds. At point D, I have a pin. So my forces at point D are going to be equal and opposite to where, how I've drawn them here. So when I draw DX on member CDE, I have to draw it in the opposite direction. So on A, B, D, I drew it going to the right. So on CDE, it should be going to the left. So I'm going to put DX right there. And dy should also be equal and opposite. So on ABD, it's going up. On CDE, it should be going downwards. So there we have dy. And at point C, I haven't drawn that yet. So I can just go ahead and draw that however I want. I'm going to have a cy and a cx. Let's just draw our joints in there so we can see them a little bit better. C, D, 
E. And to finish up our free body diagram, we should write in our dimensions. which are 12 inches and 12 inches. So I know I want to write three equations for this member ABD here. I could write up to three equations for CDE, but I only really want to write one additional equation. Otherwise, I'm doing more work than I need because I don't need to solve for CX and CY. They're on there, they're unknowns, but the problem doesn't ask me to solve for CX and CY. So what I'm looking for here is one equation that only includes dx and dy. If we can't find one, or let's say we're on a test and we can't think of one and we're stressing out about it, we could write all three equations for member CDE and then solve for all of our unknowns and then just report the ones that act on ABD. So we could write all three equations, solve for you know cx, cy, dx, dy. We would have Let's see, six equations, six unknowns, and that's okay. Uh, but we would prefer to have three equations, or sorry, four equations and four unknowns. It's just a little bit less math. So let's start with this part of the frame. Let's call it one. So I'm gonna write my three equations for part one. So first I'm going to sum the forces in the X direction. So I have minus 1,110 plus BX plus DX. I'm going to sum the forces in the Y direction. So I have 600 plus BY plus DY. And then I can sum the moments about some point. Let's sum the moments about point D. So that's going to be a minus 600 times, let's see, 24 minus BY times 18. So I need one more equation from, let's call this number two. And does anyone who has their mic on see an equation that I could write that only includes dx and dy? Are we still connected? Yeah, people are just being quiet. Oh, I have maybe a chat. So a moment about C, yes. So we could take the moment about point C and because CX and CY both go through point C, I'm not going to introduce any more unknowns. So let's sum the moments about point C. And this is for that second member, so here on the left of my screen. So if I sum the moments about point C, I have minus DX times the moment arm of 12, plus 1,110 times a moment arm of 24. So I could solve these equations. So I can solve for dx. I'm going to get a positive 2,220 pounds. I can solve for BY, and we'll talk about what that positive means in just a minute. So 600 times 24 divided by 18, I get a minus 800 pounds for BY. 
which means I can now solve for dy. It's going to be 800 minus 600 is going to be 200 pounds. And then lastly, we have bx. It's going to be 1,110 minus 2,220. So we get a minus 1,110 pounds. So let's talk about what these pluses and minuses mean. So a plus, a positive tells us, so we have a positive here, dx, it tells us that we drew the arrow in the correct direction. So we drew dy in the correct direction on both free body diagrams. What a negative tells us is that we drew our arrow in the wrong direction. So when I report these answers, remember the problem statement asks us to determine the components of all the forces acting on member ABD. So when I report these components, I'm going to report them with the arrows showing which directions they're in. So at A, I have AX is 1,110 pounds going to the left. AY is 600 pounds going upward. I get BX is 1,110 pounds to the left because it, I got a minus here. BY is going to be 800 pounds going downwards. DX is 2,220 pounds to the right. And DY is 200 pounds going upward. So no, uh, something I said Can earlier. Can you scroll down your screen? Say that again? Can you scroll down? I didn't quite capture all of it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. okay, so something I had said earlier is that for this part two, I could have written all of my equations. So I could have written two additional equations, which are Sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero. Note this is for two, which would have given me cx minus dx plus 1,110. And I could have summed the forces in the y, which gives me cy minus dy. So I could have written you know, all three equations for member number two, but it doesn't really add to the problem at all. It just adds more complications. So here I can now solve for CX and CY, but the problem didn't ask me to solve for that. Had the problem asked for that, I would need those equations, but I don't necessarily need these two other equations for member two. So before I move on, do we have any questions about this problem? And I'll also look at any chats being sent in. Okay, so it doesn't look like any questions. If you think of a question later, uh, you can certainly send it to me or you can interrupt at any time. So let's see. So let's talk some about machines. I have more frame problems for you to do for homework. So I would like you to go over those problems and then uh, we can talk about them more uh, next class once you've tried them out. But we've talked about 
frames. We've talked about trusses. The so third part of this chapter is machines. The machines are structures used to turn input forces into output forces. So used to transform input forces into output forces. So when we think about machines, maybe we uh, think back to the first time we saw them when we talked about levers and uh, pulleys and such uh, at some point, you know, in K through 12, hopefully you at least discuss the ideas of machines. But now we're going to actually, you know, given the input forces, find out what the output forces are, or given the output forces, find out how much input force we need to apply. So typically, we want our machines to make life easier for us. So typically, we want our input forces to be less than our output forces. Otherwise, it's not a very good machine, and it's not really helping us that much. So we're going to start with a simple example of a machine, then we'll get to one that's a little bit more complex than this one. So this right here is what's called a toggle vise, and we're applying a force down at C, and then it's pushing down and applying a force this way on this block at E. And our problem statement tells us that a 100 pound force directed vertically downward is applied to the toggle vise at C. Knowing that length BD is six inches, so we're given that BD is six inches. Oh, I'm sorry, this is problem 123. So knowing that the link is six inches long and that A is equal to four inches, determine the horizontal for force exerted on block E. For us to find horizontal force on block E. So not only are we changing the mag is our machine changing the magnitude of our force so we're applying a 100 pound force downward and hopefully our force that we're applying on the object is going to be greater than 100 pounds so not only is it changing the magnitude of the force that we're applying but it's also changing the direction of the force we're applying here so typically for machines, we find that a free body diagram of the whole machine is not that useful. So we're going to say typically for machines, we don't draw a free body diagram of the whole thing. And that's because we typically don't need those free body diagrams or those equations, or in some instances, like our next example, um, if we drew a free body diagram for the whole thing, it would turn out our equations were kind of trivial. So everything kind of cancels out and they're not very useful. 
So we're going to start by drawing a free body diagram of each of the parts. So it looks like we have two different, oh, was that a question or a cough? Sounds like cough maybe. Okay. So we're gonna start by drawing the free body diagram of the different parts. So we have number ABD right here. So this part is six inches. We were given in the problem that this is four inches. We have member B, oh, sorry, that's C, A, B, C. Uh, B, D here is six inches. And then I'm going to draw our little roller piece here. And this is fifteen degrees. Okay, so we have our external forces. So we have this 100 pound force here. And if the object is applying a force to the right at block E, we'll have an equal and opposite force here at the block. So at A, we have a pin. So we'll have a Y and a X. And at E, we have a roller, or sorry, at D, we have a roller. So we'll have that DY. So when we look at this, maybe we notice something special about BD, and that is that it is a two force member. So I'm going to assume that member BD is in tension. So here we have BD and BD. We have an equal and opposite force on member ABC and an equal and opposite force here, BD. Now I'm just assuming it's in tension for our free body diagrams. It doesn't mean that it necessarily is in tension. Okay. So now we need to figure out what this angle is right here to solve for this. And let's see. So if this is a horizontal, this is 15. These are the same length. Yeah. So that angle should also be 15 degrees.
Okay, so now we have to decide which members to use for our equation. So here we have member one, member two, and number three. So the thing we ultimately want to find is here, the force E on the block. But in order to do that, it looks like at point D, we can't really write a moment equation. So we'll have to use an equation from member one. So here from member three, we can sum the forces in the X uh, and that's going to give us E block. But first we need to write an equation from member one to solve for BD. That way we have the magnitude of BD and then we can solve it or plug it in to our equation for member three. So if we look at what equations we could write to solve for BD, we can sum the moments about A. So I have two components of BD, so it's going to be BD sine of 15, that is the Y component. Our moment arm is going to be four cosine 15. That's going to be minus. So I'm going to have minus BD cosine 15 times four sine 15 minus 100 times 10 cosine of 15, which is the moment arm. And that is this length right here is 10 cosine of 15. So we can use that equation. This is from number one to solve for BD. I get BD is minus, make sure I, that's gonna be minus 483 pounds. So that means that BD is in compression. Where I drew it as tension, it's actually in compression. So I'm going to now plug that into an equation from number three. I can sum the forces in the x direction. Using my free body diagram, I have minus BD cosine of 15 is equal to minus E block. So I get minus times minus 483 yeah. cosine of 15 minus e block equal to zero. So you get e block is 467 pounds. So when I'm doing a machine problem, I like to just do, you know, a simple kind of common sense check 
and I check that my output force is indeed higher than my input force. If it's not higher, then it's not a good machine and we probably wouldn't have created it in the first place. So our output force has to be higher than our input force. So we're gonna do another machine problem, one that looks maybe more like a machine that we've used before. But before I do that, do we have any questions about the problem we just went over? So this is problem 146. So here uh, we are applying two gripping forces of 50 pounds uh, to the handle of these pliers here. And um, so it's a, and we're asked to determine the gripping force exerted along line AA on the nut. So we're look to find the force along this line right here applied to the nut. And we're here we're given that pins A and D slide freely in the slots cut in their jaws. So given A and D slide freely, which will give us that AX and DX are both zero. So these can slide back and forth freely in the X direction. So those pins are not exerting a force in the X direction because they can slide back and forth. So it's more like a roller. And we're looking for the forces being applied to the nut. So here we'll have equal and opposite F and F along line AA. So looking at, this is what the free body diagram would look like for the entire machine. And it doesn't really get us anywhere. If we sum the forces in the X, we get zero equals zero. If we sum the forces in the Y, we have minus 50 plus 50 plus F minus F. So again, we get zero equals zero. And our moments equations will also be zero equals zero. So none of those equations help us. So we just don't really draw the free body diagram for the entire machine or write the equations for it because they're not useful. What we do want to do now though is break our machine into its different components. So it's different pieces. This is where our art skills start to show a little bit. Sometimes on a test, I go ahead and give you the shapes of the different pieces and then just have you draw the free body diagrams on them. But here uh, in our notes today, we're going to draw the different parts. So that is A, C, E. Here we have D, C, B. Here we have AB. And 
and D. So on a test, uh, if there's a machine problem, I would go ahead and give you kind of the drawings that I've shown you below. They might not have the letters written, uh, but I would have the shapes there and the points so that you could just kind of jump right into drawing the free body diagram for those pieces. So those are the four different parts of the machine. I'm going to start by drawing the external forces. So there I have 50 pounds and 50 pounds. And then F and F. Now I have to go in and draw the forces at each pin. So at A, the problem statement told us that there's no X force. So I would draw A, Y in one direction. And then on the other component that has A, I would draw it in the opposite direction. At C, it's a pin. So I'm going to have CY and CX. Then I would find C on another component and draw CY and CX. At E, it's also a pin. I'm going to draw EY, EX. I'm going to find E over here. No, every direction I'm choosing here is just random. It's important once I choose the direction, and then I have to stick with that, whatever my free body diagram says. But as I'm choosing them, I'm just choosing kind of arbitrary random directions. So here, dy, as long as it's equal and opposite, on the other piece. And then I'm missing point B. Then I can go ahead and Draw in some of the dimensions. Point seven five, point seven five. This is four point five. So I'm going also going to go ahead and label the different pieces. So I have one, two, three, and four for my pieces. And for machine problems, I like to also count up how many unknowns I have, or at least list my unknowns. So I have A, Y. Bx, By, Cx, Cy, Gy, Ex, Ey, and F. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine unknowns.
So if I wanted to, I have one, two, three, four. So I have four different members. I have up to 12 equations I could write. All right, I have four members. and three equations per member. So I could just, you know, kind of brute force it, write out nine equations, say I have my nine unknowns, and just solve that way. It's, but it's not the most efficient way to do this. What I wanna do instead is kind of limit the number of equations that I have to write because I don't need to solve for nine unknowns. The only unknown the problem asks me for is F. So it's strategic to try to get to F with writing the fewest number of equations possible. So we want to try to solve for F by writing the fewest number of equations possible. Which depending on the problem could be very few equations, but if we don't do this, then we're gonna end up doing a lot more work than what we need to, and it's gonna take us a lot longer to solve the problem. So we don't wanna write all nine equations if we don't have to. So I might start by looking at a member that has my unknown on it because I know I have to have an equation with F in it. So I need to solve for F. So I could look at four here and there's multiple equations I could write, but by writing those equations, I'm either going to introduce the unknowns, you know, dy, or I'm gonna introduce ey. So I could just start writing equations. So for four, let's start by summing the moments about point E. So I have minus F times 0 0.5 minus dy times 1.5. So now I have two unknowns, only one equation. And I'm gonna look around and see, you know, what other equations or could I write so that I don't have to introduce too many more unknowns. Another thing that we have to know about this problem is looking back at this problem, I'm not given this dimension. So, or, you know, the distance between D and C. So that means I can't really write the equation, the moment equations for one and two. So that kind of limits what I can do here. So maybe we will end up just brute forcing this after I told you to try to find the fewest number of equations. Um, but let's start with writing our three equations for member four. So I'm going to sum the forces in the x direction. I like that equation. I get ex is equal to zero. We can sum the forces in the y direction. I get dy plus ey minus f. So now that I know EX is equal to zero, I actually can write a moment equation for number one. So 
So I got around that problem by finding EX is zero. So I can sum the moments about C for number one. So summing the moments about C for part one, I have it's going to be a positive 50 times 5.25 minus AY times 0.75 minus EY times 0.75. So I can do the same thing for part three as I did for part four. And we can sum the moments about Point B. We get AY times 1.5 plus F times 0.5. Okay. So here I have, I don't mark these equations. So I have one equation here, one equation here, and one equation here. And in those equations, I have unknowns. Oops, not this one. So in my unknowns, I have F, DY, EY, and AY. And it doesn't look like I have another equation that only has those. So we're just going to keep brute forcing through this. So for number three, I can sum the forces in the y equation or y direction. So I have F minus BY minus AY. Summing the forces in the X gives me that bx is equal to zero. And then for member two, I can write an equation where I sum the moments also about point C. I have minus 50, times 5.25 plus dy times 0.75 plus by times 0.75. So we're not going to count these two equations because they don't really tell us that much. But right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six equations. And let's count our unknowns. We have AY, EY, DY, BY, and F. Yep. 
So I even have one extra equation that I don't need to use, but I have those one, two, three, four, five, six equations. So I can easily solve for our five unknowns. You can do that by setting up a matrix. It's probably good to get some practice. Got one, two, three, four, five. So let me just number the equations that I'm going to take here. So I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I made us write an extra equation down there. Um, but we're gonna take those five equations. We have our five unknowns. Let's see if I can, I don't know how to make this thing go away. Oh, there we go. So our five unknowns are AY, put them in order, BY, DY, E, Y, and F. So I'm going to set up my matrix to solve for them right here. So in equation one, I have negative one times a y, I have negative one times b y, zero times d y, zero times e y, one times f, all equal to zero. In equation number two, I have one point five times a y, zero times b y, zero times dy, zero times ey, and 0 0.5 times f, all equal to zero. In equation three, I have zero times ay, zero times by, one times dy, one times ey, negative one times f, is all equal to zero. In equation number four, I have zero, zero, minus 1.5, zero, minus 0 0.5, it's all equal to zero. And then that last equation, number five, I have minus 0.75 times ay, zero times by, zero times dy, minus 0.75 times ey, zero times f, and you have 50 times 5.25, it's gonna be minus, because I'm moving it to the other side of the equation, minus 262.5. So we can plug that into our calculators. Do a five by So when I plug that in, I get a matrix with all my unknown values, but it only asks for F. And I get F is 350 pounds. So 
So remember, we started this problem, and when we first counted it up, we had nine unknowns. And we ended up writing eight equations. Uh, we didn't really need this one, this one, or this last one. We kind of just got overzealous with writing equations. So we only needed to write those five equations. To get the F is 350 pounds. And also I do that common sense check to make sure that my output force is greater than my input force. So if you've ever used a pair of pliers or a wrench and wondered how they worked, now hopefully you have a little bit more of an idea of how all the pieces work together to kind of amplify that force and increase our input force to give us a greater output force. Do we have any questions about that problem? Okay, great. Um, I think we're gonna stop there. Uh, thank you for being um, amenable to kind of meeting me online. I appreciate it. Oh, it looks like I have a chat coming in. Yes, we will cover more machines on Wednesday um, so that we can go over them a lot. There's something that's very commonly missed on the tests and the finals, so I want to make sure that we go over them uh, thoroughly and that you have a chance to ask lots of questions on Wednesday. So definitely go over, look over the problems that we did today and bring any questions that you have. And I will post some homework problems on machines. I think I have some posted on frames, but I'll um, look and make sure if I don't, I will post some more questions on frames and machines right after this. Um, I'll also post this video, it takes a while to uh, process and upload, but as soon as that process is finished, I'll post this on Canvas as well. So great, I will see you all on Wednesday and I'll post those homework questions soon on Canvas.